Thanks, Zijin. Hi, everybody, and uh, thanks for attending our webinar today. Uh, as Zijin mentioned, uh, this is feature. Uh, this webinar is uh, to cover new features in Adams 2017.2. So uh, I will go through those features. We'll talk about uh, faster parallel solution. Uh, we'll talk about Adams Car Assembly Management Extensions. Um, some ability to uh, semi-automate model fidelity tuning and some new Adams car events, as well as a few other miscellaneous events. The first three of these items I do want to point out to folks that have uh, started working with the Adams real-time product that was introduced uh, the previous release in Adams 2017.1, uh, the faster parallelization, car management, assembly management, model fidelity tuning all have some, some very nice direct benefits for users of Adams real-time, and I'll talk about that uh, in each one of these items. First, let's start off with performance. Uh, the number of improvements have been made to Atom Solver performance when you're running on multiple threads using Atom Solver SMP. That's when you're setting n threads in the uh, ADM parlance greater than one, so running on uh, more than one thread. So the linear algebra solver within Atoms has been improved over previous releases and uh, improvements this release as well. Also, state variables, uh, aka atom solver variables, those have been uh, improved in terms of their ability to handle multi-threading. And um, all of these items benefit both traditional integrators as well as the Atoms real-time uh, fixed-step integrator. Now, as typical with uh, atom solver performance improvements, these things, uh, your mileage will vary and the improvements will vary by model, uh, given that there's been a, a large focus on state variables, models with many state variables, as you're seeing in the charts below, will uh, tend to show more improvements uh, on multi-threads than, uh, say, models that have very few, um, very few state variables and were more thread safe to begin with. In our testing in-house, we've seen 5 to 30 percent, some cases even better on some models, uh, improvement in simulation time, though uh, spread across, uh, you know, two, four, eight threads. Next, I want to talk about Adams Car Assembly Management Extensions. Uh, we've done a lot of work in this area in recent releases. In Adams 2016, you may or may not recall, we introduced the ability to uh, have test rig add, remove, replace capability and improve the performance of the assembly process itself. Uh, a number of new improvements and extensions have been made in this regard in 2017.2. Uh, I'll talk about uh, concepts of subsystem and assembly variants, abilities to have sort of different configurations of the vehicle within a single assembly. I'll talk about on-demand test rig activation, so this means uh, test rig list assemblies, essentially. And I'll talk about subsystem indexing, uh, so we can have multiple subsystems with the same major and minor role for repeated subsystems. First, let's talk about Adams Car assembly and subsystem variants. So the way an Adams Car database is structured, the way assemblies are structured, you have an assembly references a bunch of subsystems, reference, which reference a bunch of components. So I may have my front-wheel drive assembly. And if I want to have an all-wheel drive uh, version of that vehicle, I'm going to have a yet another assembly that's going to reference a number of subsystems, uh, which may, some of which may differ uh, from what was in my front-wheel drive, some of which may not. And there'll be a lot of cross-pollination at the component level. So what that means in the subsystems and at the component level, there's a significant amount of redundant data in these two assemblies. And you can imagine that your car database gets, and maybe can experience, that your car database can get quite large with numbers of assembly subsystems and components. If you start creating variants for vehicle configurations, real physical things, you know, front wheel drive versus all wheel drive, for example, or, you know, sport model versus standard model, these kinds of things. And we may also times our, our car databases get populated with things that, uh, with assemblies that are differentiated in CAE terms. Right, in analysis terms. Well, I've got, a, I've got a model that has flex bodies and F-tires uh, and a lot of compliance in the connections for my durability type jobs going over bumpy roads. My handling model has single point contact tires, more you know, has rigid bodies, these kinds of things. So our database can get, uh, can become a little bit overwhelming with all these different, um, with all these different uh, variants that we may want to introduce. So with the Adams car subassembly and subsystem variant uh, functionality in this release, what we've done is allowed 
uh, allow users to optionally have multiple vehicle configurations in a single assembly, which means multiple parameter settings in a single subsystem as well. And uh, there's been some GUI, uh, GUI work done, so we make things easy to switch between variants within the session, and the data files, the property files behind the scenes, and the subsystem files, and uh, assembly files, I should really say, the data files uh, clearly indicate the organization uh, of variants. So let's look at this in a little more detail. So again, subsystem variants in Adam's car means parameters, individual parameters uh, can be modified and saved then as a variant of that subsystem. So we can have multiple variants available for a single subsystem and a subsystem variant essentially is just a different, different set of values for the common, you know, for the set of parameters that are in the, in the subsystem. And so it's easy to save and uh, as a new variant, easy to switch between variants within the GUI. And as I mentioned, file storage in the subsystem file will clarify then which parameters are specific to uh, a particular variant. In this case, you know, maybe a, a high performance uh, variant has a different property file for the engine torque uh, spline, for example. In terms of the assembly level, then we think of variants in the assembly level as a configuration of subsystems that can be then saved as an assembly variant. So uh, again, multiple variants available in a single subsystem, a single assembly. So a collection, I could have one assembly that has differing collections of subsystems uh, within it uh, and various combinations of those things define the variants. And so I can easily switch between variants within the session and I can, of course, I then need to specify which variant do I want to run in all of our standard, uh, standard event dialogues. So they've all been updated to allow me to specify which variant of my particular assembly I want to run. And similar to what I showed you in the subsystem file, in the assembly file, there's also uh, designations, clear designations of for which variants each of the particular subsystems apply. Moving along to on-demand test rig activation, so what this allows us to do is, you know, really think of things as the vehicle and not as an assembly being, uh, well, the vehicle stuck to some other modeling stuff that is the, the test rig, be it, uh, um, you know, be it the tilt table or the SBMM or the flat road or a suspension test rig. So test rigs are now optional in assemblies and test rigs are automatically determined by the event. So they'd be added to the assemblies that don't have test rigs, or if I have an assembly that has the wrong test rig for the event I'm trying to run, it'll just auto-correct it on the fly behind the scenes for us. And we can, in fact, use a combination, uh, combine this capability with the variance capability, such that we could actually carry both a full vehicle and suspension assemblies together uh, within the same assembly. Lastly, on uh, this front, I wanted to talk about Adams Car subsystem indexing. So this is multiple subsystems with the same major and minor role, allows me to reuse a subsystem in different locations via a uh, subsystem shift capability. So you imagine trying to build a, a, a trailer, a multi-trailer um, heavy vehicle like this. I want to repeat the trailers, I want to repeat the axles. Uh, this is capabilities available here. I'm really just repeating those subsystems uh, and then shifting them uh, fore, after, up, down relative to the, its, uh, its default position. Next, let's talk about uh, model fidelity tuning. We, oh, we do a lot of model fidelity tuning. There's a number of uh, modeling options available to us in Adam's car for different purposes, uh, full flex bodies and uh, detailed tires, detailed uh, suspension componentry for maybe durability analysis compared to uh, what you might do for handling analysis. So there's a number of different components that we think about in, the, in Adams car models that are quite commonly, uh, quite commonly used and commonly uh, switched between different fidelity, different levels of fidelity in order to achieve the right sort of performance and uh, uh, result accuracy balance that we're looking for. In this release, what we have done is introduced uh, the first of two guided utilities to easily balance this, uh, make this balance between fidelity and performance. Um, two of the most common items uh, that we look at in those terms are the anti-roll bar and uh, tires. 
and we'll plan on doing more of these types of utilities in the future. Organize these in the tools menu here under model reduction, along with some other things, that, other utilities that we've had for a while in terms of, you know, grid spacing on roads and removing switch parts and interface parts and things like that. But the two new features are the anti-roll bar and the tire model fidelity tuning guides. So these are both uh, small wizard interfaces that will allow for automated uh, reduction in modeling fidelity. And in the case of the anti-roll bar, it's allowing us uh, to run a small test rig simulation on a detailed anti-roll bar, maybe done with a discrete flexible links, you know, number of rigid bodies uh, modeled with um, uh, model with compliant connections, and those we can use that model on a small test rig to derive a, a rotational stiffness and damping properties for a sim simple uh, stabilizer bar model of you know com composed of two rigid bodies connected by a uh, connected by a force element in the middle, a twisting force element in the middle. So this would have clear benefits if we're trying to simplify a model for higher performance for, say, running real-time applications or uh, running uh, uh, some kind of DOE, for example. Similarly, there is a wizard for reduction, uh, model fidelity reduction of tires, uh, where we may want to convert a detailed model like a high fidelity PAC 2002 with uh, uh, you know, the um, enveloping tire, 3D contact enveloping tire models in it or uh, other, you know, third-party higher fidelity models and convert those into simpler PAC 2002 models. Again, for the same reasons, we may want to be going faster in a real-time environment where, uh, or uh, doing some DOEs uh, where we want to really speed things up so we can push through a bunch of runs that maybe don't require us having such a detailed, uh, detailed tire model. So there's a small wizard that takes folks through uh, running through whether or not we need to use the uh, whether or not we use, need to use the tire test trig or uh, can just use the tire data and fitting tool uh, directly or whether or not we need to start with the tire test trig. Okay, moving on to some new events and modeling objects within Adam's car. Uh, this one has both. Uh, this has uh, an AeroForce object, a dedicated uh, aerodynamics force object uh, has been introduced, so this has improved over sort of generic G-Force modeling methods that folks have used over the years. Uh, so here we can define uh, the aero loading based on uh, body wind tunnel characteristics. We can apply the aerodynamics force at one or two points and then specify those aero coefficients. Essentially, how does the vehicle uh, driving through still air, what's going to happen, uh, how is the, the aero load, how is the vehicle going to be loaded by the aerodynamics driving through still air with a number of um, options for the aerodynamics coefficient. So we can just have constant coefficients or splines that vary versus uh, wind angle or splines that, uh, 3D spline option that takes into account uh, wind angle and vehicle pitch angle. And along with that is the crosswind event. So uh, now we've defined what happens when we're driving through still air. We can also apply air during an event, during a straight line driving event, uh, the constant velocity straight line drive. We can then define uh, wind and define that either directly here on the interface, you know, wind velocity angle, um, where, the dis where, where the wind zone, uh, the vehicle enters the wind zone, and how long it is. Uh, we can also uh, go to a file-based input type, which would uh, allow us to use a wind property files uh, snippets that are shown here, so we can vary wind velocity over distance and maybe have wind that ramps up or wind angle that changes over distance or time, those kinds of things on the event. Speaking of events, a number of new Adams Car Full Vehicle events have been added in this release. Uh, ten total here, actually eight really new events, and then two that have been uh, extended uh, extended to have some new options on them. Uh, so a number of open loop steering events and uh, a few other events that have been added. So all of these are documented in the release guide in more detail. You can take a look at each one of these in more um, uh, in more detail there. Also, in terms of modeling capability in car, we've added a simple traction powertrain template. So this is a, a simple template that's been added to the uh, added to the templates that ship directly with Adam's car. Uh, so it provides torque directly to the four wheels and just proportions and 
proportions them based on, uh, on drive bias ratios. So it's available in this uh, ACAR concept database. It's available in this template powertrain simple traction. Uh, it's also, this modeling capability has been added to the uh, advanced powertrain template as, a, as an option under the powertrain parameters there. You could specify, uh, essentially reduce this down to uh, using just the simple traction. This simple traction modeling methodology is an option uh, in that template. Other ADAMS 2017.2 enhancements not necessarily related to ADAMS CAR uh, are on this slide here. We have been, over the last uh, few releases, introducing Python scripting, a Python scripting alternative to the CMD language. Uh, so we've made a few, uh, in this uh, dot release, we've made a few minor uh, enhancements there, ability to auto-execute your uh, user-written Python commands at startup. Um, the ability to do copying objects through standard Python built-in methods like copy and deep copy, and uh, the ability to group objects and manipulate the objects as a group within Python scripting as well. Speaking of Python, this is the last release for Python 2. So Adams 2018 will be moving to Python 3. Uh, so that means for your user written portions of uh, Python, they will have to be Python 3 compliant starting in Atoms 2018. The Atoms Python interface uh, that we have introduced a few releases back, um, you know, that covers the Atoms view based modeling uh, options. All of our syntax and things has been Python 3 compliant all along, knowing that we were heading this direction. So you don't have to have any concerns there. But if you have done some writing, written, uh, writing of your own uh, Python code around those pieces in the API of our, uh, our Python interface, then um, you need to make sure those are Python 3 compliant beginning with the Atoms 2018 release at the end of this year. Just a heads up there. Um, also, we've provided an option in AMP Solver to suppress uh, messaging that comes from sensors, which can overload your message file and uh, make it hard to find stuff you really want to find in there. So there's uh, an option for that uh, described in the release guide this release. And uh, the Adam Smart Co Simulation uh, capability via the ACSI, the Adam's Co Simulation interface, um, is now supported by Mark 2017 with the 2017.2 release here. Lastly, uh, with regards to Adams 2017.2, some more release information. There is no change in platform support relative to 2017.0 and 2017.1 shown here. Uh, so staying on those platforms, the next platform updates will be at the end of this year, coming with the Adams 2018 release. Uh, we expect Adams 2017.2 to be out this month, uh, possibly as early as uh, next week sometime. Uh, but definitely by the end of this month, we'll be having the Adams 2017.2 release commercially available. And uh, alongside the release documentation, the release guide, and install guides, as usual, we have a slew of new feature examples included to go through uh, the different new features we talked about here. All the new events are covered that I mentioned there are covered in new feature examples, so you can try them out in a guided form there. Also, some examples that guide you through those model reduction utilities for tires and anti-roll bars and the Adams car uh, assembly management uh, tools there, vehicle variants, uh, excuse me, assembly variants and subsystem variants, and uh, that subsystem indexing and offsetting capabilities are also highlighted in some new feature examples for you there. So with that, I will turn it back over to Eugen to uh, take us into the uh, Q&A session and make a few other comments.